We've talked about types of signaling. We need to talk about receptors, which are necessary for most of the signaling molecules, types of signaling to have their effects. So we need to have something to detect a signaling molecule. A signaling molecule or a chemical is a chemical messenger. And when it binds to a receptor, it's called a ligand. So this applies to all those types of signaling besides gap junctions are a little different because they're often just ions that are traveling across. Um, we're going to see um, these receptors uh, most often in the endocrine and nervous systems, but they also would be present and necessary for autocrine and paracrine signaling as well. So there's different ways to categorize receptors. One type, just one, the, the way I'm going to start with, is by where they're located. So we've seen before membrane receptors. Membrane receptors are proteins located on the plasma membrane, right? Um, they're going to detect external ligands coming from, um, well, either nearby or the bloodstream from the endocrine system. There's two types. One are chemically gated ion channels. You remember ion channels are literally channels that let ions through. There's little ions. Um, those can be chemically gated, meaning when a ligand binds to it, it's going to open. So this is our chemically gated ion channel there. Gated by a chemical. The other type are G protein coupled. These are coupled to other proteins, meaning linked to. Now, no, there are other types of membrane receptors out there um, that we're not going to talk about in this class. So there, there are other receptors in the membrane that are linked to other enzymes to have their signaling. We're going to mostly see G protein coupled, which means there is another protein connected to the receptor right there. That's, that's the G protein. So when the ligand binds to the receptor, make our ligand that same green color, it's going to initiate that signal that the G protein is going to do something. And we'll see both of these in more detail in, in a few minutes. Okay. The other thing is receptors can be located inside the cell. So intracellular. Typically, the molecule passes across the plasma membrane. So this is really common for steroid hormones as ligands because they are small and hydrophobic. There are some exceptions, other molecules that can use a, um, a channel or transporter to bind to intracellular receptors, but um, this is the main type. Um, and these are going to bind to a receptor that is inside the nucleus. This is our DNA. So these are also called nuclear, the most common type that we'll see is nuclear, nuclear hormone receptors. Because the receptor is going to enter the nucleus along with its hormone that signaled it, steroid hormones are um, what we have listed above. So here's a little ligand that bound to the receptor and those that complex is in the nucleus. It's actually going to initiate RNA production, so transcription, which then is going to cause proteins to be produced. This is the most common type of intracellular receptor we'll see in this class. Okay, one more thing on this image here. So the nervous system is going to use these two types.
in its signaling. The endocrine system is going to use, well, obviously this one, right? Steroid hormones, um, as well as G protein coupled receptors. All right. So let's walk through a couple of those a little bit more in detail. There, here's the chemically gated ion channels. So we've got ECF and ICF for some reference. Um, these channels aren't always open. So when the ligand binds, it's labeled right there already, that opens the channels, allows ions to flow in if there's a gradient, which there is in this case, you can, you can see. Passive transport, facilitated diffusion. Not too hard, right? Just gated by a chemical, gated by that ligand. Okay, the other type um, of membrane receptor is a little more complex looking. Um, this, this G protein or a couple of receptors are going to initiate a signaling cascade. So let's see, I'm gonna use blue just for something different. Um, so one example we'll see of this is, is it epinephrine. Norepinephrine would be the same thing. Norepinephrine is present both in the endocrine and nervous system. So this could apply to either one. Um, Epinephrine is an example of a first messenger. It is the ligand. It's gonna to bind to the receptor, the G protein coupled receptor and initiate a signaling cascade. So here the G protein is activated. Evac activates an enzyme called adenylate cyclase that converts ATP to CAMP. CAMP is the second messenger. Second messenger is inside the cell. Our first messenger couldn't get inside the cell. Epinephrine is too highly charged and enlarged to enter the cell. So now we've got the second messenger that's able to basically here on it's activate proteins. A kinase adds phosphate groups. Um, so it's going to activate other enzymes to have various metabolic effects. Depending on the exact G protein, they vary. It could have different effects. Here's kind of a little schematic to um, visualize this final step here. A kinase adds a phosphate group to a protein to change what do you think? It's shape that changes function. We can remove phosphate groups and change function again. That's basically what kinases are doing. And second messengers are activating kinases.